Hey y'all, it's me, Lynn Daniel. Mm. Coming to give you a big kiss on this snow day. You all, this is the first snow day of 2014. It's the second snow day of the school year though. And so, on the day when I was supposed to return to work after winter break, I got up, ready to go. <laughs> I said, let me check my phone because it wasn't showing on the news. I said, let me check my phone. I checked my phone and it was like six. It was maybe 10 after six. And I had already received the call like at 513 or something. <laughs> so, yeah. Check your phone first, Miss Lynn. Yeah, the technology is new. You used to get a phone call. Um then you would get a phone call from the phone tree and then it's, it, it's now it's a localized phone call you know district wide and plus i get texts from um the school and from the news local news so i stayed home today i didn't get out i didn't do anything i rested my bones that's what i did now i'm wearing my um black lipstick I put just a tad on and some lip gloss so I wouldn't look too frightening with my little Pippi Longstocking uh, do on. So I just wanted to come and say hi because um, I'm going to be back in my regular routine. Um, I think, let's see, the week of the 13th. So not this fall, not this upcoming Monday, but the following Monday. So I won't be filming um, during the week, and I probably, you know, if I can get to it at all, um, we'll see. But I like filming, um, vlogging. Vlogging is what I'm doing. I like vlogging. I like daily vlogs. Um, I really like to watch certain vlogs where people take you with them throughout their day. Well, I have done a few of those, but I forget. I mean, when when I get into the habit or the routine of doing something, I'm using my phone for some other purpose. So I'm not really thinking about vlogging unless i see something strange or unusual but i am going to begin vlogging more because i am going to become a citizen vlogger um on educational issues i'm just gonna kind of poke my nose in and ask people about one of the issues is in st louis area there are st louis public schools was unaccredited um, Riverview Gardens and Normandy School District, with, which are both a predominantly black district. All three of them are predominantly black districts, but they are unaccredited. And there are 14 other school districts in the St. Louis area that are on the verge of becoming unaccredited. So the word or the questions that I'm hearing from citizens on this side of the river is what is the state actually doing proactively to address this problem since there are the trend is you have a massive amount if you have 23 school districts 22 without Wellston I believe and almost half of them well more than half are unaccredited because half of 22 is 11, you've got 14 that are on the verge, 14 more. So, yeah, people want to know what is the state really doing to address the problem. The State Board of Education and even the governor and the legislature, what proactive steps, measurements, audits, um, you know, diagnosis, diagnostics, um, plans, what are being put in place to address this? And what, you know, I'm hearing people talk about vouchers that um, 
they think vouchers could be a solution to this problem because some of the districts, how I don't know how the districts are selected, but some of the districts are feeling overwhelmed or um, are not really wanting to be a part of the solution. And then also, once these students are removed from their home districts, those districts are left with like situations, and I'm hearing that people are moving into the Normandy district to enroll their students into Normandy just so that they can participate in the voluntary transfer opportunity. And that is not, that is, if that is happening, if that is happening, that is just not uh, the right way to handle the needs of the learners. The learners, there is a definite need. So, yeah, I am going, I said all that to say, I am going to begin using my uh, vlogging more in um, that regard as a citizen vlogger about educational issues. Um, particularly about, you know, the urban school plight with these many urban, and these are suburban districts, but they're predominantly black and they're older districts in their older areas. And, and they are, um, the demographics as far as, uh, income or, um, assessed valuation is low. So, yeah, it really does impact. All of that impacts the quality of the education there, the tax base, how you get your money, how the formulation works to fund your school. So, yeah, that's why I'm mentioning it. I'm not mentioning it just because to distinguish black from white. All of these are um, components that really figure into the formulation of school funding. So, yeah. So, yeah. And I don't know. I just think, uh, wow, what can we do? What can we do? So, um, someone was asking, um, a citizen was asking, well, once a school has been designated as in danger of losing accreditation, accreditation, um, do members of the Department of Education attend like school board meetings or are they visible at those schools or at the district? Is there a visible presence from the state that comes in to mediate or to address and to help turn the schools around so that the schools aren't left crushed? Because I mean, really, that's it's a mess. It really is. It looks like a mess. So if you have any knowledge, and St. Louis is not the only city that is facing this. Chicago is facing this. Many others. Detroit is facing this. So, and many other um, urban areas with large urban population with a dwindling uh, income base which is pretty much every major city in the United States. So, y'all, yeah. All right, so that's my vlog for today. Yeah. Citizen vlogger on educational issues. All right, y'all, be blessed. See ya. Bye. Leave questions. If you have any questions or comments, leave them. And I'll leave some links below for, for you all to check out some of this of what I've been talking about. And thanks for not laughing at my Pippi Longstockings. <laughs> Bye now.